Hey everyone, welcome back. So we had just set up the camera following the player, and now we're going to fix up how the objects are spawning. Because right now, if we just come over to the game object, so in the room start, if we have a look at the object spawning code, the position of the objects was dependent on the room within height. So we were only spawning them around the edge third of the room. But this isn't what we want anymore. Our room is quite big and we want the asteroids to be able to spawn anywhere in the room, but just not where the camera is. Because if they spawn where the camera is, it'll look like they're appearing out of nowhere. And we also had similar code in the alarm zero, which is where we were continuously spawning the asteroids from. And potentially in the future, we are also going to be spawning enemy objects. So rather than have lots of spawning code all over the place. I'm going to kind of get rid of all of this and generalize it into an external script that we can call. Kind of like how we've been using create instance, we're going to create our own spawn objects off the camera script so that we can spawn an object, any number of objects around the camera. So we can actually delete everything from this repeat down to here because I want to replace it with our own script. I might also just disable the audio playing. So if you didn't know about this, you can right click on an action block and hit disable. And that means it's not going to be run when the game runs. So our song will no longer be playing. And this is actually really helpful if you want to check or debug code. So you can just disable a potentially problematic code and then see if it fixes it or something like that. And then you can just re-enable it, of course, right here. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and create our script. So right click on scripts and we're going to call this one spawn off camera. So we've just created a kind of little place for code, kind of like an event in an object, only it's not tied to any object. This can be kind of run by any object, just like any object can run functions. So let's just come back. And the way I want this to work is we're going to use a block called execute script. And right here, we can now select our new script called spawn off camera. And I want to be putting in two arguments into it. So firstly, the object that we want to spawn. So for example, obj asteroid, and then a number, so say 40. And then I want it to go ahead, take care of that and spawn all the asteroids. So let's come back to the camera. And now how do we get access to these? Whatever inputs that we've just put in. Well, inside a script, we have access to a special variable called argument. So I'm going to just grab those arguments. I'm going to declare a couple temporary variables. The first one is going to be obj. And then the second one is the number, right? So the object and the number. Now to get it, we're going to type argument, square bracket, zero, and end square bracket. So that will get the first entry in the argument array, so the first argument that we put here. And remember, our arrays start at zero. And then for the second one, we can grab argument one. So now we have access to those inputs. Now let's have a think. In this script, we eventually want to be creating a number of objects. But for now, let's just concentrate on getting one. So we know in the end, we want to be using this function right here, create instance. We know the object that we want to create. It's not going to be any of these. We don't want to put specifically one of those in, but we want to put this in. So whatever input we've given the script. Now, as for the position, we don't know that yet. I'm going to actually put xx and yy for now, and then we're going to kind of calculate it here because we want it to be anywhere in the room. And in fact, we can use a randomize function just to get a random point in the room. So from zero to room width will be the x value. So we can call that xx. The script to remember any of these variables, they only need to exist while this script is running. And we'll do the same for the y. So room height and yy. So now we have a random point in the room, but that could be getting a point where the camera is. So we want to not allow that. 
And how do we know where the camera is? Well, if we come back to OBJ camera, remember that we do have a few important camera variables that we set up. So the camera X, Y, we know it's going to be the top left of the camera. So we know if it's larger than the camera X and camera Y, but smaller than their other edge. And their other edge is just going to be the camera X plus the width and the camera height plus the height. So that's the bottom right corner. So if it's anywhere within that kind of rectangle, that's not going to be allowed by our script. The only problem is we can't actually access these from within our script. This belongs to the camera object. So we just have to be careful and make sure we are using the dot accessor to get to them. So now, like I said, we want to check if it's within a certain rectangle and we could use a bunch of if checks. So we could check if the XX is larger than the camera X, but smaller than the camera Y. But there's actually a really nice function that exists for this. So we're going to use a function call right here. And this one is called point in rectangle. And it does exactly what we want. It checks if a certain point is within the bounds of a rectangle given by its top left X1, Y1 and bottom right, x2, y2. So we already know the point that we want to check. It's xx, yy, this point right here. And then the top left, and, and then camera x plus, camera width, and camera y plus camera height. Now, like I said, though, we don't have access to the cameras variables within the script. So we want to make sure that this is actually being applied to the camera object, right? So if we have the camera check for this and then save the result in a variable called boundary check, bound check. So now the, the behavior that we want is for it to roll these dice and then do the check. And then if the check, it's so a bound check is true, then we want it to do it again, to come back to here and then do it again. So to do that, we can use what's called a while loop, which is going to basically run while a condition is true. So let's drag these three over to here. And the condition that we want to check, of course, is this boundary check. And we want to be checking if it is equal to true. Now, the only problem is that this variable doesn't exist at the time that we do it on the first loop. So we have to make sure that we're declaring it out here. So let's do bound check and let's make it true to start off with so that when it checks it for the first time, if bound check is true, it's going to enter the loop, do this and then check it. If it's false and we have a point that is not inside the camera, it's going to go ahead and exit the while loop and create the instance. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that temporary variables aren't limited to one object scope. That's why I've been able to use XX and YY inside here, which is actually being run by the camera. And the same for boundary check. So because all of these are temporary variables, their scope is the whole script. So any object that we apply this code to before it was the game object. So all of this is the game object. And then this is the camera. All of those can access all of the variables within here, these ones, but they can't access each other's instance variables that we declared up here. So just keep that in mind. We have to be careful whose variable belongs to who. All right. Now, one final thing that I'm going to do is if we think about it, our asteroids, their origin is centered on their sprites. So if they get created on the very edge of the camera, it's going to look like half of the asteroid is peeking over the edge and it's kind of going to look like that bit appeared out of nowhere, which is not what we want. So we want a little bit of padding around the camera. We want to make sure that they're quite far away from the camera. So I'm going to set up a new variable called padding. I'm going to make this 64 pixels, which is equal to the size of our largest asteroid. So that should give us plenty of room. And we just want to subtract that from the top corner, from the top left corner of the rectangle and add it to the bottom right. Okay. 
So now that should all work for just creating one instance, but we haven't taken into account this number right here. So we can actually just use a repeat, a repeat loop. So if we drag that into here and drag all of this into our repeat loop, we know that we want it to repeat this, do all of this code a number of times equal to this. So that way we can create whatever number of objects that we pass into the script. Now the only problem now is that pretend we're on the second loop, pretend we're making two objects. If we've gone ahead, rolled the dice, gotten a point that isn't within the camera, that means bound check will be false. We've gone and created it and we've come back to the start to loop again. If we do this, bound check is going to be false now and it's not going to do all of this. So we actually have to be resetting bound check within here. So I'm actually going to take this out and we're going to declare it within the loop itself. So within here and make bound check true. So that way it will reset a number of times in the repeat loop. All right. So now we are finally done. That should create all of our objects. So now we can come back to the game. This script should now be working and we can come into the alarm zero and delete all of this object creation code as well. So from get a random element down to the creation of the asteroid, we can delete all of that. And now we can perform our script again. Execute script, select our spawn off the camera script and the two arguments that we need are obj asteroid. And now how many do we want to be making? So remember, this is just to create one asteroid every few seconds. And maybe we should decrease this from four seconds down to one, let's say, just so that it's creating more objects to fill our quite large room. It's just going to make it a little bit quicker. And that is it. We should actually be done with that. Let's give it a test. So now if you'll notice a bunch of those asteroids just spawned within the camera, which is not what we want. We went to all that trouble of creating the script so that the asteroids wouldn't spawn inside the camera. So why is this happening? It's not actually the fault of our script. It is to do with the order in which the events are running. So remember the camera initially sets its camera X, Y variables to zero. So to the top left. So by the time that this script runs, the camera hasn't updated yet because this script is run in the room start event, which happens before any step events run. So the camera is still at zero, zero while this runs. So it makes sure that nothing spawns where the camera would be if it's at zero, zero, but not where the player is. So we actually want the camera's update code to happen before this happens. So we are going to add this update code. We can actually just copy all of this and add it to the room start so that it's happening before the step event. Now, the only problem you might be thinking is that whose room start event is going to go first, right? So the game and the camera have a room start, but we want the cameras to go first. And we can check who actually will go first. Let's head over to the very first room because that's where our camera and game objects are getting created. And normally there's a few things that determines what object gets to go first. One thing to check is its depth. So if something has a higher depth, it is going to run first. But at the moment they have the same depth. They're both being created in the instance layer, which is a depth of zero. So the second thing to check now is the instance creation order. So if we click that we can see that the game object is actually being created before the camera. And that's kind of because when we were first setting up our objects, we dragged the game object in first and then the camera. So the game object was kind of instantiated first, but to change that, we can just drag this on top of this one. So now the camera will be created first. It will be running its room start events before the game object does. And we're going to get the behavior that we want. Okay. So let's run that again. And there we go. We can see that no asteroids were being created on top of the camera. And you might want to just run that a few times just to check that it is indeed working. 
but we should be good now. So that's it for this video. We finished with all of the camera work. In the next video, we're going to be having a bit more fun. We're going to be making the background more interesting by adding some parallax to the stars and having multiple star layers that move at different speeds to kind of create the illusion of depth. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.